Hello, good day and welcome back. And today, we're gonna shift gears a little bit. When I started this section on Kubernetes, I said that I'm not gonna talk about what Kubernetes is. Instead, I'm gonna go right in and start showing you some things in Kubernetes. So we look at how to set up Kubernetes and get it running. And then we look at how we can run our application stack with our microservices within Kubernetes. And we use the knowledge that we had from running um, Docker images and using Docker Compose, and we're able to use the Kubernetes command in essentially the same way by actually calling the run command. And then I showed you how you don't have to use the command line. You can use a config file, which is sort of similar to how Docker Compose work, where you have this YAML file where you describe how your container should run and talk to each other, and then the command takes care of making sure that happens. But now that we've done that successfully with pods, I think now it's time for us to get a little bit more insight into the technology we're using. Now, we're not gonna cover everything about Kubernetes. So even though this is titled, what is Kubernetes? I am still going to hold back a lot of information for now because Kubernetes is really big and we can just get lost in trying to understand all the different components, how they work. And you can see tons of video online where people do cover some of that stuff and they do it very well. We're eventually going to cover what we need to, but I'm still not going to cover all of it today. I'm going to give you enough today for you to understand how your component, your pod was running. Okay, so let's start with what is Kubernetes. And so Kubernetes is an open source project. It was first started by Google and released in 2014. And um, it is now under the management of the CNCF, which is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And Cloud Native Computing Foundation is part of the Linux um, Foundation. There are many projects within the Kubernetes ecosystem. And we're going to talk about a few of them much later on when we, after we've done the core Kubernetes stuff. And they will also be managed by the under the same um, organization, the CNCF. Now, that only tells you where Kubernetes originated and how it's being managed, but what is it really? So I would say Kubernetes is a cluster management software for container orchestration. So if you read that backwards sort of thing, when you're trying to orchestrate or organize and control how containers behave, when they're running, when they should be stopped, how many of them should be there, and these other things, who's talking to, which containers, con containers have access to which other containers, and that sort of thing. So you wanna do this uh, for a large number of containers. And so Kubernetes is really for managing a large number of containers in a cluster. So once we get a cluster, we know as well we talk about many computers. And so we'll get back to that in a little bit. Now, Kubernetes treats a cluster of computer as a sort of an operating system, if you like. And the reason why you want to think of it that way, because if you say to Kubernetes, here are my computers or here are a set of hosts, right? Physical servers or virtual, it doesn't matter and I want you to be installed and, and installed on those things, and then now I want you to run a container, Kubernetes is the one that makes the decision of where to run that um, container, right? But remember, containers are running pods, so just keep that, right? So I'm gonna say, you know, Kubernetes decide where you wanna run that pod, and that pod, of course, have one or more of your containers. And so, yes, there are things you can do to tell it, uh, oh, I really prefer if you run it on this set of hosts or that set of hosts, but generally, what you really want to do is that you want to think of it as you give a Kubernetes control of a bunch of machines and then let it figure out where to run it. And really, why should you care where to run it? At least you have really, really good reasons for wanting something to run on a very, on a very specific host or a set of hosts. You really don't want to care about that. Now, I've shown this picture before where I said you have a Kubernetes cluster and within your cluster, you have pods and a pod um, runs one or more containers. I've just even mentioned that, and I keep repeating it so that it can just be like something you just know without having to think about it. Now, I'm going to start using, um, shift to using more standard Kubernetes iconographics. And because one, if I do that, then as you continue Kubernetes journeys, it's going to make sense when you see those other icons. And you don't have to really think about my silly drawing compares to what you're going to see elsewhere. So we'll try and use the more standard Kubernetes icons. So from now on, when I say pod, I'm gonna use this little icon here that is the standard Kubernetes icon for a pod. Now notice for the pod icon, there's this little box, right? And you wanna think of it like that is like containing your containers, right? Uh, I know, uh, 
probably overused word there. But, but that box is where you have your containers being managed, right, by a pod. Now, we said that though your pod is going to run in your Kubernetes cluster, right? Kubernetes cluster run your pod. So where's this pod exactly? Well, your pod is running on a node. And I'm going to explain what a node is in a bit. But just let's stick with this. So your pod is running on a node. Think of a node as a computer, um, you know, like a server, whether it's physical or virtual. And there can be, of course, many nodes within your Kubernetes clusters. That's what we said, that though generally you want to have multiple nodes because um, then you can run more containers and you don't have to think about where they're running. So, for example, when I am running uh, Minikube, if I say kubectl get nodes, you'll see that it returned that I have only one node. And the role for that node is master on a control plane. Don't worry about that. Ignore the roles for now. It's just one node. And so we can still, that's still a mini uh, Kubernetes cluster. We've used it. But if I'm running K3D instead, and I would encourage you to, unless you have some real good reason for why you shouldn't run K3D, K3D is going to run on your Mac, Linux, and Windows. And I've shown how to do that. So look at a previous, like two or three videos back, when I say installing K3D. If you run K3D, now you can say that I want a Kubernetes cluster with multiple agents. These agents are these nodes I'm talking about. So if you look here, I'm run creating a K3D Kubernetes cluster that has one server, and we can get back to that another time, and three agents. So I'm essentially creating a cluster similar to this. And so now if I created a pod, it's going to be running on one of these nodes. Remember, the Kubernetes cluster is going to treat these nodes as an operating system and just take care of scheduling where to put stuff uh, on these different nodes. What is your, a node really? Like I said, a node is like a server, whether it's a real machine or a virtual machine. So this is some host within your network or a set of hosts within your network. And you're going to configure them with the Kubernetes software so that then they can become nodes or other things as we'll see. So often when we want to depict that a host is a node, we might use this Kubernetes icon. So what does this icon mean? If you look at it, besides actually having the word node on it, it looks like it has some gear wheels, and then above that are some pods, right? Remember the, the pod look like these little containers um, or these little boxes. And so, yeah, that's what a node is. It's a node where you can run multiple pods. And so that symbol tells you that um, everything you need to use, know there without having to reuse the pod icon and all that stuff, because it can get pretty crazy. So once we have a host, um, and we want to say that the, that host is capable of running Kubernetes pod, we're going to call that host a node. Okay, so in this example, I have three hosts, and each one of them is a Kubernetes node, which means they're capable of running pods. Now, once we have a host, that we want to make a Kubernetes node, right? Remember, this is the icon we're going to use to say that how we have a node. Well, what makes it a node exactly? When you install the Kubelet software on a host, it becomes a node. Now, again, notice the similarity between the Kubelet and the node. They look very similar except for the word Kubelet and node. So let's take away the node icon because what I'm saying is if you take a host and install the Kubernetes Kubelet service, it's a little service that runs on the host, now that host is a node, a Kubernetes node. And a Kubernetes node is where you can run pods. So why is host one then not a Kubernetes node? Because I did not install the Kubelet there. Now, I can still make it a host within the Kubernetes cluster that run meaningful services for Kubernetes. So for example, I can install the scheduler, which is another piece of software from Kubernetes. I told you, there's a lot of pieces to Kubernetes and we're not gonna learn them all. And with the scheduler on let's say host one, what it can do then is it knows about the other two hosts. And so the scheduler is how your pods end up on different nodes. When you say create a pod, let's say you create a pod to run 
um, let's say, or counter, the scheduler is like, oh, I know it's all, there's um, the host two, or node two in this case, is available and has resources, so let me run it there. And similarly, if I try to bring up server or the um, Redis node, it might go, oh, I think that's all I can put these two pods on node three, right? Remember, node three is the host that's running, um, rather, um, host three is just um, a host that's running the kubelet service, so it's a Kubernetes node where I can run pods. The schedule is never going to put a pod on host one because host one does not have the kubelet service. So the kubelet service is what's talking to your Docker or if you're using Containerd or any other containerization sort of technology to actually create those pods. We can remember pods are just a set of containers and that's why when you have a set of containers within the same pod, they have to be on the same host or the same node, right? Because they are being run together. Now, who's telling the scheduler what to do? This is your API server. And what is the API server there for? Well, you as a user, you're outside of the cluster. And that is why if you do not have Minikube or K3D running, and you try to run the kubectl command, it will tell you that there's no cluster. Um, basically, I think I showed in the first video, there's a config file, your kube config file, which lists all the clusters you have access to and which one is the default. So you might be working for a company or even at home, you might create multiple Kubernetes clusters and you want to be able to say, but well, when I run the kubectl command, which Kubernetes cluster should that be sent to? and the it'll be sent to the default one. And to the, that Kubernetes cluster, your command or requests that you type from the kubectl command line actually connects to the API server on the intended Kubernetes cluster you want, sends it to that API server, and then the API server, and we don't have to care whether it's directly or indirectly, right? Because <laughs> we're gonna leave out a lot of boxes but the API server eventually gets that information somehow over to the scheduler that says, hey, and in this example, we're thinking about, we want to create pods. And then the scheduler go, oh, I know some nodes, I have some nodes available, and I can put the pods on there, all right? Again, like I said, a lot of information. So, so far, this I think is basically enough to tell you how your pod gets run on a Kubernetes node. A server or a host runs a kubelet piece of software and becomes a Kubernetes node onto which you can run a pod. But of course, you also, that kubelet needs like Docker, for example, something that can create containers. And there are many other technologies besides Docker that does containerization, right? Container D, Rocket, all this other stuff. What the kubelet is doing is actually creating containers. All right, now we show them as pods because that's the smallest unit of thing that Kubernetes manages is a pod. Okay, so one last piece of thing before we go. Now, there, like I said, we leave out a number of boxes. So in Kubernetes, there are a set of nodes. And remember, each node is really a host that you have the Kubernetes software installed. You might also have another host or multiple other hosts where you don't install the kubelet software, but you install like the scheduler, the API um, server, cluster manager, and all these other things, okay? Um, and when you have a set of nodes, we call that node components, okay? They're specifically the compute part of your cluster. They're actually doing the work of running your application. That's what happened on the nodes. The other part that's taking care of scheduling, receiving your request, making sure other things are happening and so on, that's the control plane, okay? Now, doesn't mean that oh, if I have a host, which is a physical or virtual machine, I couldn't install the kubelet service on it and the scheduler service. Of course I can, because we know that's the case, because when we build a mini kube cluster, we simply have one node. Right, and it's one host, and on that host, we install all the software for scheduling and API and everything else, and makes that one host a Kubernetes cluster. 
but it's playing multiple roles, right? It's doing our compute and it's doing our control plane. So that's where I want to leave it for now. Now, before I get out of here, as usual, I, I'm going to ask, if you're not a subscriber and you watch this video to the end, consider being a subscriber. I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. If you're a returning viewer and you've subscribed already, thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming back and sticking with the, my videos. I really appreciate it. Take care. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.